I'm Jordan Rayner, and this is the Word Before Work. Today, we're starting a new five week series here on the Word Before Work called The Most Excellent Way. You want to do your most exceptional work for the glory of God and the good of others. But what does biblical excellence actually look like? According to the Apostle Paul, it looks like Christ-like love, as we'll see throughout this series. Let's start by reading 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 together. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Again, that was 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. With Valentine's Day right around the corner, you are bound to see that passage popping up all over your social media feeds as a reminder of how God calls us to love our significant others. But the context of this passage was not primarily marital love. Paul was writing about how to steward spiritual and vocational gifts. After listing out gifts like teaching and healing and helping, Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 12, 31 through 13, 1. And yet I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal, end quote. And then a few verses later, he launches into the famous love is patient, love is kind, et cetera, et cetera. Paul's point is that you can be the most exceptional teacher, filmmaker, or entrepreneur on the planet, but if you work without love, you are, quote, nothing. See 1 Corinthians 13, 2. While the world may call your work excellent, God does not. Over the next five weeks, we're going to zoom in on five of Paul's descriptions of love from today's passage that are most difficult to live out at the workplace. Let's start here. Love is patient. That client whose constant delays are making your life difficult, that boss who can't stop micromanaging you, that little one who's always barging into your home office, you and I are called to show love to these people through our patience with them. Why? Because the Lord is patient with you and with me, see 2 Peter 3, 9. We deserve death after just one sin, see Romans 6, 23, but God showed immense patience with us prior to salvation and continues to demonstrate patience with us today in our sanctification. And so we are called to be ludicrously patient with those we work with. How? Here are three ways to cultivate patience with those we work with today. Number one, get specific about where God is patient with you. I'm in a season right now of, frankly, habitually failing to love a certain enemy and the Lord is patiently sanctifying me here and being cognizant of his patience with me has led me to be more patient with others who struggle with different sins. Number two, remember that if not for God's grace, you would struggle with the exact same shortcomings that make you impatient. If you value punctuality and are impatient with those who are late, remember that were it not for God's grace, you too would be habitually tardy. Number three, pray for patience. Right now, ask for God's power to follow the most excellent way of loving those you work with through your patience with them today. Today's devotional only scratches the surface of how God's word connects to our work. If you want to go deeper, sign up for my free 20-day devotional called The Word Before Work Foundations at twbwfoundations.com. These email devotionals are designed to help you gain a rich understanding of the biblical narrative of work, how exactly your work matters for eternity, 
and what those truths mean for how we ought to work today, you can sign up right now again for free at TWBWFoundations.com.